Good morning, Floss Tube. It is Friday the 14th of April 2023. I'm Sarah and you're very welcome to my channel, So Me Sarah. Today we're going to talk about my cross stitch progress and we're going to have a little look into my pattern stash and we're going to have a look at the summer patterns that I have just to give you some inspiration. So enabling alert for a little bit later on in the video um, I may be showing some things that you can't resist buying. <laughs> so welcome to everyone who is here watching the channel today. Thank you especially to those of you who are new subscribers. Thank you for clicking the button and subscribing. Um, I notice that my numbers are creeping up very slowly um, in the subscriptions and we are beyond three and a half thousand I think now. So, um, so that's nice to know. Um, and it's lovely that some of you are choosing to come back and to catch all the episodes here on So Me Sarah. I hope that you will continue to enjoy them. So since last time, it has been the Easter holidays here, which means no school <laughs> and no routine, which is always a little bit of a challenge, but it has been a nice Easter nonetheless. Uh, we had a lovely day out on Easter Saturday. We went to a National Trust property um, here in Northern Ireland and in the UK, we have the National Trust, which preserves and conserves um, older stately properties, really, um, and coastlines, areas of outstanding natural beauty, that kind of thing. Um, so the National Trust is um, the organisation that can do that. And here in Northern Ireland, we're lucky to have some very beautiful properties. Um, so on Easter Saturday, we went to Armagh. Um, and in the countryside there, there's a house called the Argory. It is a 19th century Irish gentry home, really. Now, I've never actually made it into the house. You can go in and have a tour of the house, but each time I've been to the Argory, I've had small children with me, so I choose not to go into stately homes with small children. <laughs> so, um, so one day, maybe I will get in around the house. So I will put a few pictures in here just while I, I have a very brief chat. Um, there's a picture of the house, which is not my own picture, I confess. <laughs> um, Miss Charlotte didn't really stand still for long enough to get good photographs of anything. So we were keeping a tight eye on her. But they have lovely grounds um, at the Argory. And they had a little Easter egg trail for children so um, we paid our money and went on the Easter egg trail around the grounds and that was fun and at each little station they had um, like a nature themed activity for the children to participate in. It might have been jumping over zigzag ropes or climbing logs or having a sniffing game so you can see some of the pictures here of the sniffing game that she enjoyed. Um, and it was just a really nice way to engage children with their environment, with the gardens and the environment that was there. Um, our local park here, um, Hillsborough Forest Park, has recently, recently as in the last year and a half or so, installed some art sculptures that are intended to help engage people with the forest park. But I have to be quite honest with you and say that I think they're monstrosities <laughs> that shouldn't be there. Um, plastic and carbon fiber and um, yeah, they're to me they're just horrible and they don't they encourage people to click on a to use their phones uh, and engage with social media again to find out what they mean by using the barcodes that are on them. To me, that is not encouraging people to engage with the forest park um, as intended at all. It's just turning the forest park into a theme park. So I was really, really pleased with the National Trust's efforts to engage children with the, uh, with the environment around them. So at one of the stations, there was a little guest, the Paw Prince game, and they had the Paw Prints of hare and badgers, and the children could follow those little tracks and... Um, and, the, and play a guessing game. So I I appreciated that. Anyway, rant over, <laughs> rant over. It was a lovely day. Um, and one of the very nice things of the Argory is they have quite a, a large area of swampy ground and they've built a boardwalk over that. And um, Charlotte has some sensory issues. She um, 
has proprioceptive needs, which means that she needs to connect with the ground a lot. <laughs> when she was really little, we were a bit concerned about her because she would throw herself at walls or <laughs> the ground and just launch herself down. But she was seeking connection, apparently. Um, I don't pretend to fully understand. <laughs> but, um, but she gets a lot of um, sensory input through her feet. And the boardwalk, over the marshy ground was quite springy and um, you know it was stable don't get me wrong I wouldn't have liked it <laughs> if it wasn't but it was stable but it was also moving and it, as it moved you could hear the squelch of the water and you could you know it was absolutely fantastic for her um, getting all this sensory input through her feet different movement um, and um, sensations you know um, up through her welly boots <laughs> and into her feet. So it was really nice. It was also a very pretty walk through parts of the grounds that would otherwise have been inaccessible. Anyway, that's a very long story about the Argery and a bit of a rant in the middle. <laughs> uh, we did have a lovely day and um, we found all 10 of the Easter egg trail checkpoints and came back and Charlotte got her chocolate egg. So that was our special Easter day out. We've had some other um, lovely times as well. We actually managed a successful family lunch, the four of us, because Andrew is home from university and it is no mean feat. <laughs> Let me tell you, we have not had lunch out with Charlotte for, well, I think since she was able to be strapped in a high chair. So <laughs> it's been maybe three or four years um since we've been able to actually go for lunch and that was um very nice it was quick <laughs> because she doesn't have patience to wait and sit um, and then creates trouble but um but she I have to say she was very good we went armed with coloring books and resources to try to keep her busy and we were hopeful that there wouldn't be any crying children because that upsets her massively and we just had a couple of small incidents <laughs> but she was actually really good and heartily enjoyed her burger and chips <laughs> and uh, then we were able to actually chat as a family and it was kind of semi-normal so that was a big achievement for us and it was very pleasant to have to say so um oh and the other excitement that we had <laughs> um i took andrew into belfast on wednesday morning of this week uh, we had a few places that we needed to visit and we just happened to be in the right place at the right time and we got to see President Biden's motorcade. <laughs> it was equally um, impressive and underwhelming at the same time. <laughs> so President Biden visited Northern Ireland this week um, very briefly. He flew in on Tuesday night and he had an engagement at the Ulster University on, on Wednesday morning, Wednesday lunchtime, and then he left to go to Dublin. Um, but um, he was staying in a hotel in the city centre in Belfast, which and Andrew and I were in Belfast city centre, and he was making his way to university. So for a brief mm, five seconds, <laughs> we saw his car pass by and all of the other very impressive vehicles in the entourage. So um, it was impressive as a sight, but it was over so quickly that it was kind of underwhelming. That is all I meant by that <laughs> phrase. So we just happened to be in the right place at the right time. So thank you for your response to the last video. Thank you uh, for appreciating the little chat I did about chenille trims. I am no expert, as I said, um, but it, I thought it was useful to pass on some of that information and I hope that some of you will be able to make use of it. Thank you for some of your suggestions about using one of the braiding tools and to twist some chenille strands together and see if that would give me a thicker chenille um, to use around. So if, if ever I have opportunity to use a braiding tool, <laughs> um, I will certainly be giving that a go as well. Um, thank you also for your well wishes about my throat. It is getting better. Um, it is not as dry. So anyway, thank you for your well wishes. I am I'm getting there. It is much better and it's much easier to talk and much less painful. Now, let's have a look at some stitching, which is what we're all really here for. I have some finishes to share with you. I have progress on my whips because I didn't show you any last time. And then I will have a little um, 
spotlight on the summer patterns that are in my stash to share with you. So I have two FFOs to share with you this time. They were um, actually ready for the last video, but I had packaged them up and sent them out as gifts. And now they have been received so I can share those with you. I apologize for the nighttime grainy pictures of these little pillow finishes, but I uh, was actually parceling them up to post off when I remembered that I hadn't taken this little video clip. So these are the two little pillows that I have been working on on 40 count linens. The top one is a 40 count mallow by Zweigart and the bottom one is a 40 count platinum linen by Zweigart. Uh, these are my first ever efforts on 40 count and I really love how they turned out. I love the fineness of the detail in the floss. I hope I'm not making you sick by moving around. Um, but I love the fine detail of the stitches on the fabric. So the top one is an adaptation of Be a Cheerful Giver by October House Fibre Arts. And I showed this pattern on a previous floss tube. Um, I had to make it a little bit wider and taller just to be able to change the word. So instead of having Be a Cheerful Giver, I changed the sentiment to a moment of gratitude to be applicable to the recipient of this little piece. <clears throat> I have backed the pillow with a cute little piece of tilde, which I think works really nicely with the blues and greens in the design. And I'm hoping that the recipient will like it. This was also my first effort with the chenille and um, I'm pretty pleased with this. I do like a slightly thicker chenille but um, the colour for this one worked really pretty well. And then the second little moment of gratitude pillow that I made is um, an adaptation of Home Tweet Home by Primrose Cottage Stitches. So I'm sorry this is bouncy and my arms are shaky tonight. So this part of the design is the Home Tweet Home exactly as charted except for the colours. I switched the colours out um, away from pinks and blues to uh, be orange and blues. Again, to suit the recipient. <laughs> um, I think you may well guess who the recipients of these little pillows will be given the, that I changed the sentiments to a moment of gratitude. Now, Home Tweet Home doesn't have any wording, any text, on the original pattern but I just made it into a lengthy pillow by uh, charting the moment of gratitude myself. And again a little bit of chenille to trim and on the back of this one I have a piece of, sorry I'll pull it back, a little piece of Bonnie and Camille fabric from the Shine On collection in orange to go with what's on the front so and this cushion underneath here is just to support <laughs> this one for for the photographs <laughs> for the videography really so those are the moment of gratitude pillows that i'm going to be packaging up and sending out into the world and um, they're for two very special ladies and i hope that they will be well received so those are the two little pillows for nancy and jenny i am um, happy to say that they have arrived finally. They seemed to take forever <laughs> to get to them. Um, the mail is, it is, international mail is working, but it's terribly, terribly slow. Um, and it was fun to see on their last video, on the Bougie Stitcher's last video, it was fun to see them opening the little parcel and um, receiving their pillows for the first time. So that was, that was fun to be able to be included in their opening of that. So anyway, let's move on. I have a couple of finishes. So the first finish I have to share with you is my finish of Real Comfort by Modern Folk Embroidery. Now, since the 31st of December, this has been my daily thread project. 
and a couple of weeks ago I was getting very very close to the finish and I sped it up by putting in a few extra threads um, in a day. So that is that is the reason that I do a daily thread project is to move something on to finish and to bring it to a point where I am motivated to keep at it and to get it going. So, um, so perhaps some of you might feel like that's cheating <laughs> because I did more than a daily thread. But for me, that's the point. The point is to use the daily thread as motivation. As the end is in sight, then I really want to give it that extra acceleration, as it were, put my foot down and get it finished. So here is my finish of Real Comfort. So happy. I had, um, as I told you earlier, I had one stitch too short on this column, of this tr sort of tree trunk column and I left out a row, which means everything is higher. And it, but I already had all of the border in place, which meant I have one extra row in this section, but you'll never know. I just, I chose the line that I thought it would be best to leave that extra space in, and no one is gonna ever be any the wiser. So I did not have to unpick the bottom borders again, which was a relief. And it keeps it exactly square, and the same size as I am no bird, um, which I hope to stitch some other time um, as a companion piece. So I am absolutely thrilled with this. This is classic Colorworks Red Licorice on uh, 25 count DMC even weave in a crew. And I stitched one thread um, one strand of floss over one thread of fabric. So it's 25 count one over one stitching. I only changed the dates on the pattern. Um, the dates on the pattern were in celebration of the bicentenary of her birth. I think of her birth. So they were 18, sorry, 18, 17 and 2017. But because um, I wasn't stitching this in the, in the bicentenary, what I did was I just used the dates of her birth and death instead, which seemed to make more sense. I love it. It is going to sit in the pile for some time because I'm going to stitch, eventually stitch I Am No Bird and hopefully finish them as a pair somehow. So you probably won't see it for a little while, but um, it's a real pleasure to have this one finished. Okay, next, my next finish is a small one. Um, so sometimes at night time, if I'm, I want to do some stitching, but I don't have it in me, I don't have any energy left to do anything big or complicated or that requires lots of counting. I have been working on the strings from Lizzie Kate. I've been working lately on the buzzy string and finished it. So these don't take very long. Um, I've been working on this one for a while because I didn't pick it up for quite some time for a number of weeks. But really you could have this done in two or three nights um, of, of stitching. The only thing I did differently on this chart was to replace the American flag with the Union flag. It's only called a Union Jack if it flies off a Royal Naval vessel. That's my little piece of um, trivia for today. It is referred to as the Union, Union Jack frequently, but it, that is incorrect, technically ingrained. So the, it's only a jack when it's on a Royal Naval vessel. Anyway, I hope you're not too bored by that tidbit. <laughs> Here is my buzzy string with my Union flag. I used the um, DMC alternatives that were suggested on the chart. So there are fancy flosses are called for, but there's a DMC alternative and I used those. Um, if there are any changes, it's only like one shade up or down. So one number of a difference. If 677 was called, I might have used 676 if that's all I had in my stash. So that is Buzzy String. I love the bees and the watermelon. 
it's cute. They're all cute. All these strings are cute. I have another one to show you in my whips. <laughs> Those are my two finishes. With the last couple of wicks. And I have then probably a double burst of, um, of whip progress to show you because I had a little bit of progress up to the last video, but I didn't um, take the time on the last video to show you the whips. So the first whip to share is this one. Excuse my very crumpled pattern. It's getting moved in and out of the bag a lot. <laughs> and this is Modern Folk Embroideries 2020 Sal. It's called a Family Patchwork Sampler. And this is Jacob de Graff's um, design, beautiful design. I'm stitching it on a 32 count Murano in antique white and I'm using DMC 3832, which is a lipstick, like a lipstick pink color. And here it is. I'm sorry, I have not had time to iron anything today. It was uh, just a chance to get a video recorded. <laughs> so you can see it's all, it's got the rolled up marks from when I leave stitch in hand. So since I last shared this with you, I've been working down here at this bottom corner and completing what would be page nine of the chart. And that is complete, except these white areas here do have some personalizations in them. So you can see on the chart, Jacob has his name and initials and things in there. And um, I haven't quite decided what initials I'm going to put in, what wording I'm going to use on the chart. So in various places I've left that blank and when I get it finished stitching, then I will figure out what I'm going to put in there. I did take a risk <laughs> and I put the date in, 2023, in the great hope of finishing this year. I then made some progress and started page 10. Some of it I already had done because it comes sort of across here um, at the bottom of the stags. So I had completed this, this central section already, but I've worked in here this week and um, we'll continue down here to finish page 10. Now that I have finished with real comfort, I have moved this one, a family patchwork sampler, into my daily thread spot. So every day that I stitch, I'm going to start with one length of thread going into this pattern. I am also putting the pattern into my rotation. So there are some days when it will get a full evening's attention as well, just um, because now I only have this to do over to here <laughs> and it feels like the end you know, could be this year and, and I won't have to unpick my date and make that a four. <laughs> so that is my plan. Um, and I really, really just can't wait to see this one on a wall. So one of the um, things, I'm sorry, it's quite heavy to, to hold up. I'll just set it down for a minute. Um, one of the things I wanted to share with you was this little gadget, which was recommended to me by a viewer. So Jane contacted me, she sent me the email and she said, oh, I think you would like this gadget. It's called a Dome Threaded Needle Case by Clover. And it looks like this. Now I had seen these before, so it wasn't entirely new to me, but I wasn't really, when I'd seen it before, I wasn't really sure that, oh, that I would use it or how I would use it. But Jane made the suggestion that it was very useful for monochromatic pieces. And that got me thinking, I thought that is a great idea. So I used it on Real Comfort and now I'm using it for the family patchwork. And the idea is that you pre-thread your needles and the, this little dome cover just keeps them safe. And you have 10 pre-threaded needles. Now you can see I only have five left because I've already worked five of them. So you pre-thread your needles and you wind it around and it winds them up nice and safely. And then when you want to work on it, you just pull your needle out and pull the thread and out it comes. 
Now, some, sometimes you do get a little bit coming out, so but it it doesn't tangle. So far, I haven't had any tangles. Um, I couldn't have just worked while I was on screen. <laughs> don't work with children, animals and dome threaders. <laughs> it's fine. But it keeps everything actually is all wound up and it is nice and neat and tidy. So I know there are other needle threading um, gadgets that you can get, little foam pillows and, and things, um, and you can pre-thread your needles. I don't think I would use this where there were lots of colors involved because I wouldn't be able to keep the colors from getting mixed up. But if you have a project that is monochromatic, this is ideal. If you have a project that maybe only has two colors and they're, you know, they're very distinctly different, like a black and a white or a yellow and a black or something like that, this would also work really well. So thank you so much, Jane, for the suggestion. I do love it. I just spend the time, wind the 10, there's 10 needles in here. I, I thread them and wind them and then it just sits in my bag and it lasts me the week if I'm doing, you know, it lasts me 10 days if I'm doing thread a day or maybe a week or a couple of nights anyway <clears throat> if I'm if I'm working on it in rota if we're working on the project in rotation sorry I'm tripping over my tongue today <laughs> so I will use this thread later because I am hoping that I will be able to get back uh, to some stitching this afternoon and I will put one thread into this beautiful piece so that's my progress and the gadget. Next, I'm going to share my progress on Alice in Wonderland. This is a free pattern that you can access from Isle Forest Embroidery. It is possible to download it still. I know that we can't order from Russia and some of you may be choosing not to order, but anyone who does want to know, it is available as a freebie on their site. And they also have a UK site now too, Isle Forest Embroidery UK, UK, I think it is. If you Google Isle Forest Embroidery UK, you'll find it um, and find their free charts. This was a sal that they did, broken up into monthly parts. I didn't start it at the time of the sal, but I started it um, with my friend Kathleen from Kathleen's Trodden Trails. And we are just doing a little informal two-person style on this one. Um, Kathleen loves uh, fairy tales and she is going to stitch a fairy tale wall. This is one of the patterns that she's going to do and I joined her for this. So it's very detailed and it's very beautiful. But it, the detail does mean that it feels like it takes a long time to make big progress. But anyway, I had previously worked on this side and then since I last showed it, I've worked, come across and worked over here. We have some filler, you know, just some plant life. And this is the March Hare's house. And then this is the beginning of the Cheshire cat. Let me show you him. Um, sorry. Here he is here, with his big grin. So he is a mighty cat. <laughs> I have been working on him for the last two nights and I'm not anywhere near as far on as I thought I would be, but it's a lot of counting. <laughs> and I have been watching television and paying attention to a few documentaries <laughs> along the way. So that probably slowed me down too. Anyway, it is a little bit more progress and I think it's shaping up nicely. It's still going to take quite a while to get this one finished. Okay. Then I finished one of the houses in the Glitter Village series. This is by Country Cottage Needleworks. And this is house number four. And I got it finished. Just adjusting it on my board because it just Fell, over, fell, slid over when I was moving the previous project. Again, apologies that I haven't ironed. This one you can see, I work in a hoop. 
and I work it in the hoop to open the threads um, because I just find these the glitter fabric just a little bit more tricky to work with. So this is house number four. It doesn't have any backstitch that's required. Um, the first house has a little bit of backstitch required in the snowman um, and I haven't done that yet. I'll do it at the very end but the other horses haven't had any um, further backstitch so far. It's a very pretty, pretty pattern. You can see why white stitching isn't brilliant but it will do <laughs> and when you pull it back a bit it's not so noticeable. <laughs> I'm looking forward to number five, which is the little church in the middle of this uh, nine part series. So I might get round to that this weekend. We'll see, at least get it started this weekend. So that is Glitter Village house number four. Um, I'm stitching on the cold four fabric and using the cold four flosses with that one. Um, I forgot to say that Alice in Wonderland is on a 32 count aqua linen um, by Swigart and I have converted the pattern to silky threads. If I have forgotten to give you any detail that you want or need um, or you would like conversions, I don't do them very often, but if you would like the silky conversion for example, um, I'd be very happy to provide that for you. Just ask, just drop me a wee email or drop me a direct message on Instagram and ask. Okay, the next pattern is afternoon tea and it is a kit that I was gifted for Christmas by hubby. Um, I'm just switching these patterns over onto my board. This one is particularly curly because it's been rolled up to stitch in hand. <laughs> so I am sorry about that, I just did not have time. So here is afternoon tea. I managed to get the stack of teacups. Whoops, sorry. I managed to get the stack of teacups completed. And that little strawberry in the bottom. So I enjoy the result. I'm not thrilled about the actual working of this kit. And um, I explained before, sorry, this is, I should tell you, this is a kit by Heritage Crafts from the Karen Carter collection and it looks like this. So you can see, ironing them does help them to stick to the board, I have to say, when they're flat. You can see how far I've got, not terribly far. But anyway, I explained before that this kit has um, half stitches horizontally and half stitches vertically and it's worked on Ada and I find it to be quite tricky. It's not so much the making of the stitch, it's not the, you know, stitching the stitch is okay. It's the counting and it's knowing where you are on the chart that I find really difficult. So much so that I've actually taken a pencil and highlighted as I'm going along um, so that I know where I am. I, I gave up and I thought, well, oh, it doesn't matter. I know I could have photocopied it, but I'm not going to stitch it again. And um, I'm not destroying it. Someone else could see it, could read it if they wanted to. And I just decided to go ahead and colour it in. <laughs> just to keep track of those half stitches, I really find them difficult. I find that I need a lot of brain capacity, so it doesn't work at the end of a very busy day to try to stitch that one but I do love the result and I know that it will be worth it. And you know what? We can do hard things. <laughs> so I, you know, I might grumble about it, but I will keep going and, and I will get it done. And you can do it too. We can do hard things. <laughs> okay, let's move on. The next whip I have been stitching on is Caterpillar Cross Stitches British Isles Adventure Sampler. <clears throat> it's a mystery sampler and it's a six part release and we have now received part number three. I can't show you a picture because obviously it's a mystery so there isn't a picture to share just yet. So part three moved further south and we came down for after we had done Wales previously. So we've come down into Wiltshire into um, Stonehenge and then we have come round the bottom south west of England 
and into Devon and Cornwall. So we have a Cornish pasty, which is delicious. <laughs> Google it and find out what's inside. <laughs> it's lovely. Um, it's a savoury pasty um, with meat, mince meat, like ground beef, and potato, um, carrots and onions and, and a pastry um, <clears throat> shell. It's delicious. This is a little beach hut just to symbolise um, lots of the beach communities and the beach huts that you would find there in this area. This signpost is signifies Land's End and Land's End is the the furthest southwest tip of the, the, the um, of England. And then coming around still in Cornwall is the Eden Project. The Eden Project is an eco project um, with it has like you know kind of iconic biodomes in it um, that you can you can visit it's a very nice it's a very nice family day out and um, you can go into the tropical dome and you know whatever we went when it was just open I'm sure it looks much different now that everything's grown up um, I think it opened I think it opened around the late 1990s maybe 2000 that kind of time um, it might actually have been a Millennium Project. I can't, can't quite remember. Now these two little islands down here, I am curious about and will be interested to know what they are. <laughs> um, I couldn't find them on the map. And I'm wondering if they are Jersey and Guernsey, but I'm not sure. If they're Jersey and Guernsey, they've been, they've been brought north a bit um, just to keep them belonging to the United Kingdom really but they could be something else that I am that is more locally known and if you know please let me know um, so that I can be wiser <laughs> about it and I'm sorry I can't tell those of you who aren't UK based what they are um, the islands of Jersey and Guernsey are further towards France than these would appear on on this particular representation but they could be there um, Anyway, I am guessing again, and you know that that doesn't go well for me. So, <laughs> so I'm going to wait and see on when Caterpillar Cross Stitch put out the video for their own um, their own explanation of the symbols. I'm sorry, I got distracted. Um, there's a football game going on in the garden. Let me see. <laughs> sorry, let's see if I can. Oh. There we go, Charlotte and her friend in the garden. They were playing football a second ago. <laughs> and I hadn't expected them to be there. Daddy is out with, outside with them because Charlotte can never be outside by herself. But that is her little friend who lives very close by and goes to school with her, is in her class at school. So she'll just be so happy to have company. <laughs> anyway. Sorry, momentarily distracted. Um, <clears throat> back to the British Isles. <laughs> so yes, I'm guessing, let's see what Caterpillar Cross Stitch have to tell us when they put their video out, um, which I imagine will be pretty soon. Okay, next we move around into Devon, the county of Devon, and these are Devon scones. Now this is highly controversial, folks highly controversial when i stitched this i stitched it originally stitched it exactly as per the chart but you see <laughs> the chart has the scone and then the cream and then the jam but i don't eat mine my devon scones like that i eat mine with the scone and then the jam and then the cream so there is a huge debate about whether it's jam first or cream first. Is it jam then cream or cream then jam? I am most definitely in the jam first camp. <laughs> jam then cream. Now that could be because here in Northern Ireland if we have um, a, a Devon scone or an afternoon tea scone we would have ours with fresh cream. So we will have the jam and then a dollop of fresh cream on the top, whipped cream. In Devon and Cornwall, they will have their, um, their scones with clotted cream. 
Now, that doesn't sound good, <laughs> but it is good. It is good. It's not lumpy. <laughs> it's very smooth, but it's, a, it's almost like a thick honey consistency of cream. Um, and it is called clotted cream. And it can't, because of its consistency, it almost spreads. And I think that could be one of the reasons why sometimes it goes on first. But nonetheless, I would still put my jam on first <laughs> and then my cream. So I had posted this on Instagram and I made reference to the fact that I am, you know, a jam first person. And uh, Rob said, well, why didn't you stitch it that way? Or something to that effect. So I thought, yeah, she's right. Why didn't I stitch it that way? So I just unpicked the jam and the cream, switched them around and put it right. <laughs> So you can argue with me, you can argue with me if you are a, a cream first person. <laughs> and there you go. That is the highly contentious saga of the Devon Skong. Then we've got another island and that one is the Isle of Wight. I know that that is the Isle of Wight. Please don't tell me I'm wrong. <laughs> so that is the Isle of Wight, which is just off the south coast, just um, below Portsmouth in the UK. Then we're moving towards London. So we've our bus is on the route to London, our London bus. We're passing the Crown Jewels and we have the London Eye. So those are all of the symbols and elements of part three of this uh, mystery cell. And it's been lots of fun. So um, if you want some more detail on the... Um, you know what each of these are and represent do keep an eye out for caterpillar cross stitch they they normally do marie will do a little um stitch with me video on each part of the cell and tell us a little bit more about them so i'm looking forward to part four i don't know if we will go up to continue scotland or come over into ireland we'll see <coughs> Okay, next is my progress on Rejoice Evermore. This is a sal that Joanita from Stitchy Things and I are doing together. Uh, we had a lot of fun doing a sal in 2023 and decided that we would do another one together in 2024. And lots of you are joining us because you have the chart, Rejoice Evermore by Brenda Gervais of With Thy Needle and Thread. It's a beauty. And it's been fun to see you sharing your progress on the hashtag on Instagram, hashtag rejoice sal. So if you have this, if you're stitching it and you'd like to join us, use the hashtag and share your progress so that we can be inspired and motivated to keep going. I have been working on this. This is a 36 count platinum linen by Swigart. And I'm working one thread over two one strand of thread over two threads of fabric. So one over two. I love it. I'm so sorry. I really, I really do prefer to iron. Um, and if I really can, I will be better prepared <laughs> next time. But I have finished uh, the first page. So just the other night, I managed to get the first page of stitching completed. Um, I just continued some of these lines just to finish out the threads that I was working on. <clears throat> when it's nice and flat, it sticks to the board so much better. <laughs> it's just, yeah, it's just determined to get me to the... So here you go. A couple of birds, a nice little heart and a basket of flowers. And a little start on the wording for Rejoice Evermore. So, I'm enjoying that one. I adore them all though, but it's good to have a hobby that you love. <laughs> okay, next is my progress on Things Unseen. This is a Lizzie Kate pattern that was released in three parts. If you are interested, it is available on 123 Stitch and you need to buy all three parts. This is part three. It's the only one that shows you the full picture of the, um, of the design. And I have finished now parts one and two. So I got the big tall house finished and the enormous bird <laughs> and the little sheep 
the two puree. There's a uh, little special stitch. Um, it's a, is it a Smyrna or an eyelet? It's an eyelet. Um, I think it might have been a, was it a Smyrna on the chart? I can't remember um, whether I changed it or just, it's just an eyelet stitch. But you could easily, I mean, eyelets are not hard, but you could easily just have stitched in the, um, the few stitches in the cross stitch instead. So this one is coming along nicely. I now have part three is that whole bottom, the whole section across the bottom here. So that will be where I go to next. <clears throat> On Easter weekend, I managed to find some time and picked up um, a Saviour's Praise again. And this is um, a, an original design by Shakespeare's Peddler. I'm trying not to get too much glare, but I do want to take it out of packaging. I am stitching this mostly called for. It's mostly anchor threads of a few changes and um, I'm making some changes the same as Laurie Holt did. So I changed my red. I'm going to stitch the basket a different color, one of the other colors that's already there, but a different color. Um, and I might, I'm thinking I might change out these deer at the bottom, but we'll see when I get there. That's a long, long way away. <laughs> I love it. I enjoy every single stitch and it just felt appropriate on Easter weekend to stitch on a Savior's Praise. So since the last time I shared this with you, I have stitched some of this alphabet, put in this part of the border. So this is really a, um, a page of the chart that I'm working towards a page finish. I'm so sorry about all of these falling, fluttering, folding things today. <laughs> Here we go. So I'm working towards a page finish. <clears throat> And then down here is uh, the basket, is the handle of the basket with the flowers in, and it's surrounded by some sets of initials. I have put in my first set of initials, and what I'm going to do for this is to add the initials of some of my friends, my female friends, who have been influential and inspirational to my faith. So that is my plan. So I said I would bring back the um, O Holy Night Advent calendar. This is a dimensions kit. I've had this since 2006. <laughs> and I'm working and working and working at it. But um, I had left it uh, in December and decided to take a three month break and reintroduce it in April in the hope of putting it back into monthly rotation and making progress as, as good to, as close to finish as I possibly can, but no promises. So for this recent addition is this little lamb here and his bow or yeah. It doesn't look like much, but it's quite a lot. <laughs> it's a 16 count cream Ada that came in the kit. I'm just stitching with everything from the kit. So I will just keep plodding along with this in the hope that I can make good progress this year and we'll see where that takes us to. Okay, that is all of the whips and I will just finish with two new starts. So the first of the new starts that I have to share is another string by Lizzie Kate. This one is Thankful String. It's the sort of Harvest Thanksgiving one. And I made a start. I've got this on a beautiful piece of hand dyed linen that was gifted to me. And I think it's called Pippi. Is it called Pippi or Cowrie? I got two pieces of linen. And one was called Pippi and one was called Cowrie. Let me see. It's Pippi. Sorry, it is Pippi. Right. So it's a slightly green, may not come out very well. That's maybe better. Slightly green colored. 
and I made a little bit of progress. Again, late at night, I wanted to stitch, but knew I didn't have the concentration capabilities for something bigger. So that's a little start. And then my slightly bigger start is, of course, my kit for the Get Your Kit on Sale. And this is my kit, which is the Luca S's turquoise themed teacups. And I was able to get a really good start on this because of the bank holidays. We have in Northern Ireland, we have Easter bank holidays on Monday and Tuesday, Easter Monday and Easter Tuesday. So I was able to be at home a little bit more and I made this much progress. It's a lot of white and creams. There are about seven or eight different shades of white and cream in there. But you can see that we're in these two teacups here. It's a center start because I'm working with everything provided by the kit. The fabric is a pale blue. And I'm really enjoying it. It looks like it's off centered. But um, I think once I add handles coming out this side, it will bring that over a little bit. But I did measure to the center of the kit. So hopefully, <laughs> hopefully I got it right. Um, and that is my progress. Thank you so much to all of you who are participating in the sale and sharing your kits and your progress on the hashtag. The hashtag is hashtag get your kit on sale, just for fun. And it's lovely to see um, everything that everyone's working on. I know there are lots more of you who are planning to join us. The hashtag is going to be open for a very long time. So if you are working on a kit, you can hashtag it and join us there. It doesn't have to be a new start kit. It can be something that's already in your stash, or something that's already sorry, in your whips. It can be something that, you know, you can, sorry, you can post more than one. So I may actually start to post the um, Holy Night Advent in there as well, because it is also a kit and the afternoon tea as well. It's just sharing kits, letting people know what kits are out there um, and having getting some inspiration and motivation to, to crack on with the kits that you have. So thank you, thank you for those of you who are joining me there and we're having fun on that little hashtag. So I think that's all of the stitching that I have to show you. I am going to just create a little bit of space here on the table while I'm still talking so that I can bring up the summer stitch patterns and share those with you. So I'm trying to hold on to that resolve not to purchase patterns. Um, I was gifted some patterns again this week, last week, um, and anyway, in the last couple of weeks. So I have some additional patterns, but I didn't buy them. <laughs> Okay, um, and I wanted to share the patterns with you um, just instead of, because I'm not purchasing this year, I wanted to share the patterns with you to show you that this is why I'm not purchasing. I've got all of these lovely things. So I thought that what I would show you are summer patterns. Now, initially I thought, oh, I don't have very many of those. Um, it'll not take long. I'll do, I'll do summer and I'll do these. But as it turns out, I have more summer patterns than I realized, um, which means I haven't actually stitched much for summer at all yet. <laughs> um, but I have more summer patterns than I at first realized. So I'm actually going to hold the bees to um, a sash spotlight of their own. There's not hundreds of those, but there's a nice little chunk of bee patterns that I could show you next time. So I will show the bees next time. And this time we're going to look at summer patterns. And I have uh, some are the sort of seasonal ones, the ones that come um, in a series where all of the seasons are provided, so that the designer has designed the other seasons too. And then I've got some kind of flowers and gardens, which could be summery. And then I have a couple that are sort of more seaside themed patterns. So all of those get sort of clumped together in my summer patterns. So let's start and I'll show you Buffalo Plaid Sampler by Stitching with the Housewives. Now this is available on their Etsy shop. 
It's probably also available on um, Fat Quarter Shop, but my pattern comes from the Punch Needle and Primitive Stitcher magazine, and it is the summer 2021 issue. So if you have that issue, you will have this chart. Summer 2021 Punch Needle and Primitive Stitcher magazine. Buffalo plaid is the series um, of all of the seasons. So if you have the other charts of that year, you will have all of the series. There are bees in this one too, even though I'm not specifically showing you bees today. That's a beauty. Then I have this other one from the series. This is called Celebrate Summer. And there's also, I've stitched to Celebrate Spring and I've got the other patterns as well. So this one has all things seaside, sandcastle, lighthouse, a whale, some lovely, um, a seagull and some lovely flowers. Oh, there's a little mermaid on there too. These are a big stitch. These are a much bigger stitch than I had realized that they were going to be, but they were fun. So I really, someday I will stitch this one. <clears throat> then Caterpillar Cross Stitch have lovely seasons. They've got trees. Now this is the pattern, but the pattern has no cover page. So I will insert a picture here. This is Hello Sunshine. They have uh, four seasonal trees. I have stitched the autumn one, which is Hello Pumpkin. So Hello Sunshine, you can see, has gorgeous colours in its summery, bright summery colours. Flamingos, toucans, butterflies, dragonflies, um, and all the goodness of summer. That is another one that I really want to do. They're all ones that I really want to do. <laughs> so I should stop saying that. <clears throat> another season, Seasons of the Heart by the Blue Flower. This is Seasons of the Heart Summer. These are so delicate and with Janine's usual attention to detail. And look, bees again. I didn't realize, <laughs> but yeah, bees. Gorgeous. I think I would really like to stitch all of these seasonal ones next year, but I want to do them all next year. I wonder, could I like retire for a couple of years and then go back to work? <laughs> I don't think so. I don't think that's going to wash so <laughs> The next one is a freebie chart and it is um, from summer 2020 and it's the summer house and it's by Crosette Agogo. I'm just going to hold it back and show it very quickly. I will put the link to her blog. You can go on her blog and download the chart there if you are interested. This again comes in a series and there are at least five. So there are the four seasons and there's Christmas house. Uh, there may be another house, but I can't quite remember. So this is Summer House. One day I will have all the time to do that one too. <laughs> okay, that's the end of the specifically seasonal series that I have. And now I'm going to move into sort of flower and garden patterns. So some of the things you could stitch if you have Laurie Holt's uh, stitch cards set to D. Um, you could stitch this cone flower or this little watering can. So those are from Stitch Card Set D. The other two patterns, the Stitch Card Sets come with four patterns in them and the other two are B related so I will show you those next time. Then back to the housewives who have a well, yeah, I have a thing about their patterns. <laughs> I buy much more of their patterns than I stitch, but they have uh, seed packet patterns. So strawberry seeds, daisy seeds, zinnia seeds. These are beautiful. I have even bought a plant pot and some plant sticks so that I can finish them. <laughs> I think I'm ahead of myself. <laughs> there are other patterns if you like these. Sorry, let me show you a little bit closer. If you like these seed packet patterns, there is now pansy seeds. Um, and I know they brought out a lot more. Pansy seeds, I think, is the most recent one um, that I've seen. But if you go to their Etsy shop or to Fat Quarter Shop or 123 Stitch, you will find um, 
the seed packet patterns. And those would be good summer stitches as well. But this one I showed you when I did my spring stash. Um, and this is flower market. But it could equally be for summer. So I thought I would show it to you again. Now I think the next chart came as a freebie with that. And there's no picture, which is what makes me think it's a freebie. And it's called Garden Love, okay? <laughs> It's, um, it says garden love. There's a big tomato, tomato, and there are some strawberries and some flowers and it's very cute. Um, so I think those will make lovely summer stitches too. Okay, let's, I've got a bird stitch. This is, um, this is from a series by Yasmin's Made With Love and Yas, this is a very recent release and she gifted this to me um, just this week, um, which was really very kind of her. So it isn't, uh, it hasn't been out for very long and it is part of a series that she has. There's more than four because she has Valentine's and some other ones as well. Um, but Summer Folk Bird and I think it's gorgeous. So um, that would be a lovely addition to a summer pillow bowl as well. So you can pop over to Yasmin's Made With Love to her Etsy shop and find the pattern there. And some of the others too. <laughs> if you wanna go bake, you could go with flea market flowers, which I keep showing you. I really want to stitch and I still haven't got around to starting it. But that's full of the bursts and vibrancy of summer color. And then a little bit more for strawberries. This is called Strawberry Field. And it is by Subrosa Design. And this again is from Punch Needle and Primitive Stitcher Magazine, summer 2021. I had the E version of this, which is why mine is just a printout. But if you have Punch Needle and Primitive Stitcher, summer 2021, you will have this strawberry field pattern. Isn't that cute? And then again, going a little bit bigger, we have strawberry fields forever, which I think looks very nice and summery if you wanted to do a bigger summer kind of sampler. And that's by Blackbird Designs. This chart was gifted to me by Kathleen. Thank you, Kathleen. Okay. The last three that I have to share with you are more seaside themed, um, which again is good for summer. So I have one of my Dimensions kits, the Petite Gold Collection, Girl, on the, Girl at the Beach. This has been stitched by Stitchalonka and it's beautiful, really beautiful. Sorry for the glare. Really, really cute. Then I had a Subscription with Cotton and Twine, a monthly subscription. Uh, back in May 2021, they released this as their monthly subscription, Sandy Toes and Salty Kisses. It's really sweet. I'd like to um, stitch this one soon. The very last chart that I have to share with you is a Barbara Anna. And this again is from Punch Needle and Primitive Stitcher Magazine, this time from summer 2022. And it's called Dreaming in the Seashore. See, she's got a lighthouse, little sailboat, nautical themed idea. So that would be a nice one to stitch for summer too. So that is my very healthy stash of a summer stitches. <laughs> so you see, I've got plenty to be getting on with <laughs> at some point. I hope that you've enjoyed seeing those. And as I said, next time we'll have a little look at V patterns. So before I close, um, I just wanted to mention a couple of floss tubers that I've been really enjoying recently. If you haven't watched Debbie at Creatively Yours on Floss Tube, you should. I really enjoy Debbie. She does lots of uh, full coverage pieces, but I just enjoy watching her. She's lovely. But the best is when she's recording with her friend Alice and Alice joins her because the two of them cannot smile enough and they just have lots of fun just being together and sharing the love of cross stitch together. So you could go and watch them. A couple of new cross stitchers that I, or new to me cross stitchers, 
are uh, Lisa at Lost in Stitches and Kate at Fabrics by Crafty Kate and Alicia of the Fanciful Flamingo. I will link all of those ladies down below. Their channels are lovely. Um, lots of fun, lots of beautiful eye candy, lots of lovely stitching to see and they just have lovely stories. So please go and check some of them out um, if you have a little bit of time. That's about everything today. Um, just share a few plans with you. There is another meet up of Zoom meet of the Across the Pond Stitch and Chat group tomorrow night. I'm looking forward to that. That will be with Marie and Angie and friends. And if you're there, say hi, I'll be there. Um, fingers crossed. <laughs> um, I'm also planning to have a little trip away at the end of next week and go to the Lake District in England to visit with my friend Di. So we will have a lovely um, couple of days together and I'm going to join her at her Patchwork Guild meeting. Now I'm not going to take Patchwork just because of travel and luggage restrictions <laughs> on this occasion, but I will just, I will take some stitching. And I think I'm going to take a family Patchwork, the, um, the Modern Folk Embroidery 2020 Sal piece I think I will take that so um, so that I can make some progress on it. And if I only take that, then I only have that to stitch on and it forces me to do it. <laughs> so it is close to finish, you know, close-ish to a finish. And it would be really great to push it on a bit. So I, if I take it away, I'll have three days to be able to, to um, work on it um, in those quiet stitchy moments. So I'm really looking forward to spending some time and to getting away, just being away for a little bit. So I'll also continue with my whips. I'm waiting on Caterpillar Cross Stitch releasing part four of the um, British Isles Mystery Sal. And yeah, just lots of fun to do, lots of fun um, stitching ahead. So those are all my plans. I hope that whatever plans you have, they will make you happy and that you will stay well and stitch happy. Goodbye, folks. <laughs>